Okay, guys, we're back again. I think we're going to do the old bushcraft stove. I know I showed you I built one. I thought maybe now I could uh, go into detail on exactly what it takes. I will probably be making some noise this morning because I do have a grinder. It takes air. It is noisy. I get that. So I hope I'm not going to make too much noise for you. So, here again, I told you before, we used an Ellie's chili can. That was no joke. This one, I can't remember what it was, but it was a, uh, some kind of a soup. Thing to do if you don't have cans, need to build a stove and want to build a stove, go to the store, grab a couple of cans, and just go like that and say, hey, wow, this soup and that soup will interchange about, uh, you know, the same length. Not quite, which is good, because you got that bottom space for air, so you don't really want them the same exact height. I think a little shorter is probably a, a plus for you. So this one, I kind of cheated a little bit and marked out a few little spots that how I'm going to do things out here. Um, I got holes to drill out here on the top of this can. I have uh, four slots to put in the bottom of this can. Again, using the grinder to cut the slots and my drill to put holes in this guy. This one here, normally what I do is I'll just take a grinder and I just grind the center piece out. Uh, I put slots in here like this and I'll take my little cutter. You can take a, if you happen to have some tin snips, these work great. So you can use that too to cut if you don't have a grinder. Same with this here. If you just drill a hole somewhere in here like that and get your old tin snips in here and just start snipping around, you could do that. I just prefer using my old grinder because it is a little quicker. A little noisier, but it is quicker. So that being said, I think we'll kind of get started here on the whole program. Soup can stove. And this time I'm not going to put the uh, slots in the bottom because it can get messy with your ash falling out. So we're going to want the ash falling out. So, drill. Do I have one? I do. Okay, one drill. Walla walla. And I told you before that the, uh, I don't know if the lighting in here is proper to see that, but these come in kits. I happen to pick this one up at Harbor Freight. They're fairly cheap. They cut through tin like this. They cut really, really well and real easy. So, not a problem. A lot of times I'll start out with this little guy here, and then I'll go to the big guy for the bigger hole. So we'll lay them two out, got them. Start with the small one first. So I can tighten them up properly. Okay. So let's just do this. We'll remove our label. Kind of left it on there just to give you an idea what uh, what can to use. Of course, depending on where you're living, uh, could be a hunch tomato can or who knows what, right? Well, they really glued that label on there. I've never seen it glued quite that well. Must have been the first can of the day. But that puppy, they smeared a lot of glue. Nellies, you're wasting glue. You just need a little tiny strip. So when you empty the can, the label just falls off. Okay, people? Okay, so, my inside can. Inside the stove. You can see it's got holes inside there. That's to help feed the fire. So we'll do that first. We'll just zip a few holes in, okay? Where are my goggles? Things. 
So simple. Okay. Now that that's done, a lot of times I will take my little grinder here and I'll grind inside those to clean that up just to keep you from getting cut, scratched, or whatnot. I'm not going to do that right now. Grab that rag and wipe that table off there. We're getting kind of messy. That, that's one thing you got to be careful about is all the uh, debris that comes out of these. You don't want to get cut. That doesn't look good. Okay, now, here comes the noisy part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little um, cutting with these. It'll go quick, I guarantee you. Okay, about bottom ring. I'm going to do that. One more, one more. How quick and easy that is done. Just like that, inner cam done. You're noisy. So well, that is your inside cam. Just that quick and easy. Get all the crud out of the inside. But if you can see that down in the bottom, maybe you can't. But it kind of leaves a little stuff in there. I'm not really worried about that. Because, again, you're going to fire it. It'll burn it. Clean that right up. Okay, so that your inside cam done. Outside cam. This guy gets holes down at the bottom. And like I did on this one, I put a little bigger hole in it to get a little better ventilation. That's why you need the bigger drill bit. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but we're just going to do it. And actually what I do here, like I did my other can, I mark it. So I kind of just get to get the can, go here, there's one hole, there's two hole, there's three in between, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Got my eight spots marked. Drill. Drill, please. As my elbow hits the camera. Sorry, camera, didn't mean to hit you. Isn't this fun? Get done with it. Take it in and ask your wife, what the heck did I just make? And you know what she'll say? I don't know. I don't know what you just made. Then you gotta explain it. And then she goes, what'd you make that for? I always say because I can. And they are kind of fun. That doesn't sound good, does it? This is not the noisy part, by the way. Okay, those are done. So, with that being done, look at all that garbage inside, would you? Pretty nasty, huh? And you know, really, who cares? It's on the bottom, right? I care. I do care. Here comes some of the noisy stuff. Pretty quick. Okay, inside. Here we go. Whoa, that's cool. You see that? Like a hamster can. Okay, I'm not done making noise here, I think. Okay, much better. Okay, let's wipe this bench off again, shall we? 
here again it's all about safety 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 and then get them off of you because you don't want them riding along there for free okay now we're not ready for you yet pup this guy now is the time to cut the top out and like I said earlier we will cut here right along that ridge inside after I get that all cut out then I will make my little snips and that will bend in and as it bends in it takes this can when you shove it through it'll grip that can so that is the beauty of this project it just shoves in done done simple okay Let's cut her. And here we go again. Sorry for the noise. You don't mind, do you? Turn your volume way down. Precision level of that, just about zero. If you want to get pretty, you can make it all kind of, you know, rounded, rounded. You can do that. Noisy, isn't it? So just for the sake of argument, we're going to call that just about good. Okay, so you can use a pair of pliers, which I would recommend for you everyday people. Can't even find my pliers. That's bad. But for me, I just take my, my thumb and just push it in. See, like that? Just like that. Just give them a little shove in. See how that just kind of shoves them down into place. Now, if you notice, I got my ring. I don't want it all the way in, I just kind of leave them at a little bit of an angle. There's a reason for that. As you take your can and you push it through, the can will open up, letting this in. So when it settles down at the top, like here on the ridge, all the way around, it will hold your can. That keeps it from falling through. So here we go. Let's just shove this puppy in. A little hard to get started because it is kind of a tight fit. There's one side, there's the other side. Okay. Give her a little love tap. Love tap. Done. Okay, so that's it. There you go. So now we have holes on the upper ring rig ridge blah, blah, blah. and then we have holes on the bottom I clean those up about decent enough but you could do a little more cleaning if you'd like that'd be totally up to you your stove your soup can stove right here people free of charge okay and there's my lid piece again more stuff where's that all come from who is doing all that right who would be doing that? Okay, now, we need a burner, people. You need a little little burner plate. And I've seen guys take screws and just drill screws in there and leave them up, yay high, which will hold a pot. You can do that. You don't have a tuna can. Maybe you can't cut stuff very well. 
or don't know how because you're not paying attention to my video. That is not my problem. I'm showing you how to do this. I'm trying to make it easy. So, bottom, good. No slots there. Tuna can. Here comes the tuna can. Here again, we need holes. Probably the bigger the better. You know what? Just for fun, and since you're watching, I'm going to drill some holes, starting with this big guy. Let's just see if we can poke some holes in that dude, okay? And I think I'm going to go like this. Here we go. That works awesome. Like I told you, cuts like butter. Went all the way through. That's okay. We can live with that. That one did too. I think one more. We'll try one more. See why you push that in there first because you can dent your can. We don't like dented cans. But I do have a hammer. I got a hammer. Hammer, hammer. See, you just take this little fella. You get your little hammer in there. You can just bang them right out. Again, it's got a lot of little crud in there. We can take my grinder and chop that out. But you know what? Just for the sake of noise. Hammer. And we got more stuff on the bench. Okay. For the sake of noise, let's just do this, huh? Let's just make it a quiet spot in here. Now this is going to be your feeder hole. Now we can either take that out, and I think I will just because I can, since this is my can, and now you don't want to cut. Why would you do that to me on film, on live film? Let's turn it upside down. Let's try that one, shall we? Well, it really does not want to... Why do they make two tuna cans out of titanium? What the... Seriously. Don't make me mad. I'll get the grinder out and we'll... Well, that was nice. We'll take care of you. Okay, so, look at there. One hole. Got a feeder. Now, this has got to come out. Because the fire has to heat your soup or whatever the heck you're making. I'm not too sure these uh, snips are any good. They should cut better now, I would think. You know what? Look, just, just for experimental and for fun. A pair of scissors. Let's see what that'll do. Are you kidding me? A pair of scissors will cut this small amount of sheet metal. So there you have it, folks. How about scissors, huh? So now here again, if you don't have... But me personally, I like the noisy route. So let's do that. Even though scissors can work, you saw it, they'll cut her. Actually, don't cut it too bad. Look at that, would you? So scissors will cut. You can. So, with that being said, I really like my air tool. Just gotta say. Okay, so here comes the noisy part again. Better turn her down, people. For this part, you gotta watch your fingers, because sometimes you kind of zip off and you'll run over your hand or run over your fingers. They will cut you. They will burn you. I've done that a couple hundred times in my life. But hey, it happens. That's why. No cigar, but yep, I got one. Ha <laughs> ha, I got a cigar. Okay, 
Okay, now comes the cleanup part. We just do a little kind of grinding around the edges here, clean this up, okay? this out I will. Too noisy. This piece you want pretty clean because you do handle it quite a bit, quite often. So make sure it's uh, decent, okay? Find my flag, there you are. Okay, I think that'll do that. Okay, where's my rag? Rag, please. Thank you. Thank you, rag man. Okay. There she be. Voila. Just like that. So there is your entry for the wood once your soup can. If you're cooking soup, put your soup can right on there. Throw your wood in there. Here again. It's just like, boom, twig in. Now something I didn't do last time, I talked about it, uh, but I didn't do, I think it would behoove you to put a screen in the bottom, come up about yay high, inch or so, just to kind of keep the ash from plugging your slots that we cut in the bottom of the can down here, because you need to have that air quality to come through to feed the fire, and if you don't put a screen in the bottom, the ash will build up over time and pretty quickly because it is very small um, and it could uh, slow your stove burning capacity down so a screen on the bottom would be a great thing just get some old I don't know um, not screen door but you probably need quarter inch square screen or something of that sort maybe a little bigger even would be okay just take a piece of screen and, and just turn it into one of these so you could uh, keep it off the bottom just keep your ashes off the bottom there we go with that ash thing again. We just can't keep away from the ash, can we? So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, one stove. Look at there. One stove, two stove. I don't know how many of these things I'm going to make. But it's been fun. I enjoy making them. They're actually pretty quick and easy. 
I mean, I think a guy can make them in 10, 15 minutes if you're at your bench, set up, got your tools ready to rock and roll. Uh, it happens pretty fast. They do work really well. If you're a backpacker or a hiker, they're kind of nice to take along. You can just throw it in your backpack. It weighs nothing. Honestly, weighs nothing. You can store some stuff in it in your backpack. So when you get there, you can just take the stuff out. Use your stove. It just It's twigs. Honest to goodness, it's just twigs. You can go out in the forest. Don't have a big fire. Enough to heat water. Heat a meal. Quick and easy. But they really, really do work well. It's just... Cost you just nothing. It's a soup can that you're going to throw away. Why not make a stove? You know? Doesn't take much effort. Kind of a fun little project. Don't need much for tools. I like doing them. So, as I say, we're moving on, people. But thank you very much for being here. Appreciate you watching my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe. I never asked that before. But if you do like what you see, subscribe. I'm going to try and put something on every week. Either a uh, short little video clip of something, a project I'm doing, my cabin that I'm in the process of building. Today it rained. I figured this would be a great indoors rainy day uh, video. So try not to make it too lengthy and bore you to death. I hope I didn't bore you to death with this. I hope the noise wasn't too much that you didn't turn the volume down and, and not listen to that part. Uh, if I can't edit it out, I will. But if I can't, it'll probably be in the video, and I apologize for that, for being noisy. Sorry about that. But hopefully you learned something today. I know I did. You can cut a tuna can with a pair of scissors. Isn't that awesome? Now, I don't think you could take a tuna can and cut it with this ridge on like that with a pair of scissors. That's probably not going to work. But, again, if you got 10 snips, fairly simple. Just snip it. See there? Just snip it. And then you could go away with your scissors again. It cuts easily. Look at that. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Gotta love that. One tuna can. But they're, they're thin. They're just, just very, very thin. Almost paper-like. Except this metal. So yeah. Learn something every day. Even I do. Glad you were with me. Appreciate your time. We'll see you on the next one, fellas and ladies.